Imagine walking into a laboratory where an AI model, an agent is performing experiments, running them and analyzing the results as well. This is what researchers at IIT Delhi have come about with, with an AI agent called Ayla. To walk us through it all, we're being joined by Professor Anup Krishnan. He's one of the researchers of this particular AI model. Thank you for speaking to NETV, Professor. Professor, first off, in the most layman language, explain to us what this AI model can do? Uh, you are familiar with uh, large language models like Cloud, ChatGPT, Gemini, etc. <clears throat> so what it does is that when you ask a question, it will give you the answer to this. It can also search internet and give you more detailed responses, right? But what it cannot do is real world tasks, right? Real world experiments. So what we have done is that we have connected these large language models with real world experiments. In this particular case, atomic force microscopy. And you can simply type in, you know, perform this experiment it will just write the code, perform the experiment, analyze the exp results of it and then give you the output of that. Give us the output as well. So this is something that is different from what chat, GPT or other basic LLM models can do where they cannot exactly give you a real result. That's absolutely right. So anything that chat GPT gives you is based on its training data or what it gets from internet. Here it can actually do a completely new experiment and then give you a result and that's where scientific uh, you know, uh, research is interested in. We are not interested not just in what is there in the literature, we are also interested in doing something new. And here, large language models can actually perform real world experiments and then give results uh, from those experiments. Professor, you also mentioned that this uh, particular model is focused on atomic scope, right? Can it be used beyond that as well in the health sector to find out, uh, you know, new innovations or in environment to especially track pollution or the PM 2.5 matter in the atmosphere? So, what we have done is a proof of concept. Right. Uh, this is first of its kind in the world where we have tried to connect this large language models with real world experiments and perform those experiments. To study this we took atomic force microscope because it's a versatile instrument. It won Nobel Prize, Discovery of AFM won Nobel Prize in the 1980s. It's used in a variety of sectors, basically, uh, you know, uh, to characterize materials, right. So what we did was we took 100 experiments and then evaluated different language models on those 100 experiments and then so whether our framework, framework is robust or not. Now we have a proof of concept. Now we can take it to any instrument, right? And the idea is not just atomic force microscope. You can have material synthesis, material characterization, etc. And, uh, you know, if you think of different fields, application fields, let's think of energy, environment, agriculture, medical, uh, you know, healthcare or space applications. What is the common thread that is connecting or what is the bottleneck in advancing in this field, one of the major bottlenecks is materials. If you can discover, uh, you know, a material with high conductivity, uh, batteries can be, you know, battery materials problem can be solved with that. Uh, for example, if you want materials for space, you need materials with very high thermal shock resistance and things like that. So but now... Essentially, how does this model, uh, how will we, we be able to use it in, say, the health sector or in, say, the environment scope? How does that connect happen? Right, exactly. So the primary thing that this framework can do is automate experiments. Now, if you are thinking of any specific sector, our framework basically can be connected to a lot of experimental facilities across uh, you know, these sectors and it can perform experiments autonomously in each of this and then give you the results. For instance, you are interested in a new battery material. So what you need is high ionic conductivity. So take a large number of candidate materials and keep measuring the ionic conductivity and that gives you a new candidate material. If you are interested in a sensor for air pollution, you look at a lot of candidate sensors and then high throughput uh, evaluation will help you select the right sensor. The final decision making is still with the humans, but the experiments are now significantly accelerated. So how are we ensuring then, uh, you know, scope in terms of accuracy? What the AI model Ayla is giving is in fact, you know, factually correct and very precise. And how are we also ensuring that it is not eating up human jobs? Right. So there are two parts to this. First is the accuracy part which is exactly what we addressed in Isla. We created 100 experiments and then evaluated multiple language models uh, on this framework, right? And what we saw was that the best language model could give you something close to 80% accuracy. It's not 100%, it was not able to do all experiments, but this is still a significant jump, right? And the language models are going to be better and better, so we will surely see that this will become very good very soon. 
the second part is that any result that it gives, it gives an explanation also. So you have the complete log of the experiment, so you can see whether a particular output is reliable or not. So as a human, you can judge whether you should be believing this experiment or not. The second question that you had was about eating up jobs. Uh, the key point to remember is that this is a co-pilot. It does what you ask it to do. Right? It does not make decisions, it cannot design uh, you know, new things. So essentially what is going to happen is that there is going to be a human AI collaboration mm -hmm. where the task that you want will be significantly accelerated because ILR does not need a break. It can work 24-7 and continuously work. So this is at least going to be three times more productive than humans because humans work eight hours a day. So this can work 24 hours, at least three, three times more productive and without any break. Right? So this is going to be... I mean, I'm, I strongly believe that the next few years will be that of human AI collaboration where we work very closely with this AI system so that our productivity can increase and more importantly, the mundane jobs can be given to this AI and uh, humans can focus on the scientific task. But a third important point that you did not touch upon and I want to highlight is about upskilling. Uh, in country like India, we have lots of uh, resources but not trained human resource to actually use those facilities. And here, ILA can come, ILA kind of things can become very, very useful in educating, in training people how to use this experimental facility. So I think we are going to really benefit from it and we don't really need to think. In fact, it can create more jobs and it will uh, not be eating away jobs at all. Thank you so much, Professor Anoop. So, Professor Anoop, of course, walked us through the uh, basis of this AI model. Now, let us see how does it run exactly. This is the AI model which is connected to the atomic um, force microscope right there, as we can sh show you on the visuals here. So, we, let us also talk to Professor Indrajit now, who will explain to us, while showing us as well, how exactly does this model work. So, uh, we have total uh, two softwares you can see here. One is the software for uh, controlling this uh, AFM and one is ILA. So, this ILA is actually connected with this software as well as this hardware. So, if we give any type of comments here, so then that will perform, that experiment will perform here. So, so essentially this is a prompt based um, AI model but instead of just giving information, it's actually performing the task. Exactly. So if you give any prompt, so then it will perform the task. So for example, one thing I can uh, show here, so like uh, if you want to uh, means take any image, so we have different multiples of uh, means, uh, inputs you can see here. So you have to choose different different inputs and then finally you can take the image. Can so you go with the prompt and see what the AI yeah. model does? Yeah, so I will uh, simply show a simple prompt here. So right now we can see we have the P gain, I gain and D gain that is set as 200, 500 and 100. So size, I simply want to change this P gain, I gain and uh, what D are gain. These sizes? So these are the uh, means tuning parameters to get a particular fine image. So we have to tune that uh, parameters. So if we tune that parameter, then we can give the sharp image. So if it's not optimized, then we will not give the, we will not get the sharp image. So here, what uh, exactly I have I told uh, in this ILA that I want to change this P gain to 1500, I gain to 20, and D gain to zero. So this is a simple prompt I'm giving. So we can see here we can choose different different LLM models here. So I am choosing the GPT-40, and if I send this to as a user, you can say check where I just send this to a user. So then ILA is working, and it is just talking with different agents, and it is also talking with the system, and you can see here right now. The final answer you can see the P gain, I gain, D gain successfully updated and uh, requested and the values P gain is set to 5, 50, 20 and 0. You can see here also the software it is updated. So yes, so if you want to take an image, so just you have to just give and prompt that take an image with size this and uh, it will take the image. So other than, you know, you right now showed us how it's changing or fine tuning an image, right? Other than this, what else can it perform? Like if you could give it another sort of a prompt here, which is not related to image fine tuning. So other things like, uh, for example, if we take an Im uh, image, so then in that image, we have to characterize that image. So there are different different things like uh, we can uh, take the, we can measure the roughness of the image here. We can measure the friction. So for example, Yes, we can yeah. try, but this is a long process. I, I will uh, just give an input that uh, take an image of size 1 cross 1 nanometer square. 
nanometer square and measure the Yes. So I just give an uh, comment that take an image of size one cross one nanometer square and measure the roughness. So you can see here already said that one nanometer. I'm just changing to ten nanometer. I will to check so why, whether it can change this parameter to one nanometer or not. So if I give send, you can uh, say uh, check this ten nanometer set. So if I go to the prompt and if I give the send button, so you can. Check. So it will working. So it is calling different different prom, um, uh, tools, and it is actually uh, first it will approach the tip, then it will perform. So it it takes some some time first. So but as we can see here clearly, there are codes also that the AI model is simultaneously processing, right? Yes, yes. So uh, it will do first. It will approach. Then finally, after approaching, it will uh, uh, it will scan scan the image. Then it will analyze the image. There's a lot of process. You can see now the scanning is started. Yes, it's scanning is right now. The scanning is doing. So after scanning, so it will store the image. Then it will open the image, it analyze the image. Then it will measure the roughness. So it is a huge long process. So usually, what we do, we manually capture the image. Then just take this uh, this image to another laptop. Then we open with a different software. Then analyze that image. But here nothing is required. You just have to give them simple prompt. It will do anything. So as we can clearly see here, you know this very new and the first of its kind innovation, not just in India but across the globe as well. That IIT Delhi researchers here in house have come about with is not just going to amp up the research and the upskilling of our own people right here. So and. Also, with respect to experiments as well, this is going to not just speed up the process, but make it simpler, easier, and more cost-effective as well. With camera person Aman, this is Tanushka Datta for NDTV.